Yeah, you f***ed up. Bitch, you are a fake friend. She goes, I don't want to hang out with these losers. You're a liar. You're a f***ing liar. Who talks this way? Katie says you call the paparazzi all the time. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Orange County, Season 18, Episode 8, Once a Traitor, Always a Traitor. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So first and foremost, in this episode, I kind of realized I love Gina's voice. I love how she talks. I'm just gonna fucking say it. She's so serious. She looks amazing. Did she ride a horse here? Yeah. I think it's Jen. She's so accusatory. Oh my gosh, do your foot really fit in there? Dang, boy. It's like this weird East Coast Valley girl kind of hybrid. Like, I think she's been in Orange County long enough to kind of adopt some of that, like, I don't know. It's this weird kind of combination that just pleases me. I don't know. And I should also note that Emily really took accountability in this episode. She like did some reflecting and noted that like she really did pop off on Jen. It wasn't her fault. And she noted that like it has to do with Emily and like things that she has to work out with her childhood. It has nothing to do with Jen. So she took accountability for that. But I also like that Jen didn't really like let her off the hook too easily. Like while Emily was apologizing, Jen was kind of like, well, hold on, let's talk about this for a little bit. Like, let's kind of like work through this and like get to the root of it. So she didn't just like, oh, it's fine, whatever. She's like holding her accountable. So I'm really liking that. People love Jen online. Uh, looks like Tara is about to shift from going in on Shannon to going in on Jen. So we'll see that kind of dynamic. Um, I also really like that, you know, we see Tamara interacting with Sophia, her youngest in this episode. We also learn a lot more about Katie and like her family situation. So I really like that aspect. And you know, we see that like both Tamara and Katie, their daughters kind of have like a lot of things in common around the same age. They're gonna try to like get them to hang out. I don't know, I think it's a great idea. Um, but anyways, the episode kicks off with Tamara, Heather and Emily. They're all sitting around having drinks and chit chatting about Shannon. Cause remember, Heather and Emily were on a trip in La Quinta with Shannon while Tamara wasn't. Just kind of chit-chatting and whatnot. And they all kind of agreed to keep Shannon in the dark about Alexis and John's intentions with like, oh, we're gonna share this ring camera footage, blah, blah, blah. Literally everyone in the group knows about this, but they're kind of like, we can't tell Shannon. It's gonna like, it's too much. Let's kind of keep her in the dark for now. And what do you think about that? Cause you know, I understand why they didn't tell her at like the traitors party, but it's kind of like just not telling her at all. I don't know. And I also get that she's still kind of reeling from like the lawsuit shit and is just like a whole separate other layer. I don't, how would you like address that? I, like, I feel like it's like someone should like invite her to like a one on one and like tell her the news. But I know damn well it's not gonna fucking happen. It's gonna come out in like the worst way possible. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of weird that they're all kind of agreeing not to tell Shannon when everyone knows this. I don't know. I think it shows that they don't have Shannon's back. But I don't know. Maybe it could be wrong. I think it's trying to protect Shannon for now. Like, let her go through one thing at a time. I'm not totally sure. Speaking of Shannon, she then gets a breathalyzer installed in her car. And this scene is kind of comedic relief. And that's that's really needed because the whole episode is kind of light and just kind of like unimportant, but it's still kind of enjoyable, you know what I mean? But we have some comedic relief with that. Oh, perfect. Figured it out. Instead of going, oh, you go, oh. You never want to disconnect. That's another violation. You almost did Are it there. Are you kidding? Yeah, Would I have been violated? Violations, yes. Jen and Katie then meet up for some yoga. And Katie's always like, oh, I don't work out. I don't do this. I don't do that. We've seen Katie, like, you know, meet up with Jen and do some exercise and shit. So it's like, okay, well, you're, like, open to it at least. But she's always hemming and hawing about how, like, oh, I don't do this. I don't do that. It's like, girl, we see you doing it. Like, anyways, they meet up. Katie says that she texted Heather after Big Bear, but she, like, never got a response from her. And Katie's like, I'm not going to kiss your ass, Heather. I'm not Gina. <laughs> um, Jen then hears her son, Dawson, like, peel out of the fucking driveway in his Mustang and speed off. And they both kind of look at each other and she's just like, he's going through it. He's still like processing the 
divorce and whatnot and you know had him like move around a lot with Jen and just like he's just kind of dealing with that and it's like Jen like he's, he's driving like a douchebag like stop, stop about to drive like that like oh my gosh but it's just like teenage shit so they do when they have these nice flashy money it's kind of hard because it's like you know when they're like in that bracket and it's like you know he's gonna compare himself to his friends and people at his school it's kind of like you know, he's like, I can't just drive, like, some used car, but it's like, he doesn't need this fucking Mustang, like, I don't, what happened to get, get, like, a fucking, a used, like, Honda Civic, or, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, bro, or, like, a brand new, like, Nissan or something, like, if anything, you know what I mean? But, like, a, like, a Mustang, like, really, girl? It's my child. Your child has that Mustang? Yeah, it's really cool, Dawson. I don't know, maybe it's, like, one of Ryan's old cars, who the fuck knows? But it's just like, okay, girl. But yeah, she's kind of dealing with that. She already noted that, like, she's kind of been super lenient with her kids. Now she's starting to kind of, like, realize, oh, crap, I have to, like, kind of change that. But yeah. And it's just typical teenager shit. You know, like, you give them an inch, they take a mile, yada, yada, yada. But it's like, girl, I gotta get a handle on that. You know what I mean? Like, anyways. Katie then opens up to Jen about how she and her ex really don't speak at all. They, like, don't co-parent or anything. Her ex lives in Atlanta and... Her third born lives with him full time. And she explains that she had her daughter when she was like super young. She and her ex-husband got married when she had like just turned 21 and she didn't even want to get married to him. Like she noted that right before she walked down the aisle, she was like having doubts about it. But her dad was like, well, I mean, we flew all, we're all the way over here in Hawaii. Like we're here, like you, you got to do it. So yeah, she got married, she didn't want to. Um, like Jen, Katie was kind of pressured to stay in her marriage by her family. And she says the divorce was really rough. She notes that her ex like threw out all of her baby books and the scrapbook she made as a kid, all of her shit basically. He just like throw that out, it was a really toxic situation. Her first two children don't talk to their dad really anymore. Well, she said her daughter, firstborn, doesn't like at all. She's like, she even goes through like a, a name change process later on in the episode, but uh, her second part, I'm not too sure about it. But she does say that her two older children see their stepdad as dad. They see Matt as their father. Uh, her thirdborn lives in Atlanta full time, so she's kind of dealing with that. So really connect over that. And again, you know, Katie has a lot in common with Jen. And despite Gina trying to keep painting her as a liar, I kind of like Katie so far. That's another thing. Gina takes every opportunity to be like, Katie's a liar. Katie's always lying. Katie's always lying. Gina, I think you're lying. Like, girl, like, why do you keep bringing this up? I don't know. Girl, I like the way you speak, but like, let's calm down the lying accusations. Like, come on now. Uh, Emily then gets a spray tan and she talks to Shane about his health and blah, 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 all that shit. And she also vents to him about her situation with Gina. And she's kind of like, you know, Gina is making me feel like I'm mean and aggressive, but I had to be. Like, do you think that, you know, I am a bad person? She's kind of talking to him about it and working through it and whatnot. And this conversation about whether Emily's mean or not leads to a discussion on Jen. And Emily explains that Jen just reminds her of her own mother. Like not taking accountability, blaming other people for their problems, shit like that. And she gets emotional and she's just like, you know, it's not her fault. I just need to like, you know, work through that. And then she explains that, you know, she's so hard on the outside because she had to be growing up. You know, she didn't have it easy. So she can't open up about that. And again, she's just like, really reflecting on this shit and she's recognizing that she shouldn't take this anger and hostility out on Jen. We then see Tamara take Sophia driving and they chit chat about college and whatnot because Sophia took a gap year so now she's applying at community colleges nearby just kind of about that whole process. Tamara also notes that Sophia still doesn't chat with Simon neither does her son Spencer so Two of her kids don't talk to Simon, while Sydney, her firstborn with Simon, doesn't chat with her. So there's that whole dynamic, all that estrangement going on. We then flash to Katie, and her daughter's filling out her name change form and whatnot. She also gives some more background on like her estrangement from her father. 
Kay notes that when her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, she felt as though her ex-husband was preventing one of her sons from seeing her. So her daughter Kylie, like, sent him this text telling how selfish he was, all this shit, and they have not spoken since. He, like, doesn't text her on her birthday, she feels abandoned by him, so she's changing her name to be Matt's last name, so she's going to Kylie Janella. And while on the way to go drop off the paperwork, Katie tells her daughter that, you know, Tamara's daughter also has, like, her own issues with her biological father. They're, like, both around the same age. So they want them to just kind of connect and see if they kind of hit it off, which I think is a great idea. Uh, everyone then gears up for Tamara's Traders-themed party. So I've never seen Traders, but I've seen a lot about it, like, on social media, on Twitter and whatnot. Like, a lot of the Housewives accounts were talking about Traders when it was on, because, you know, we have these former housewives on it and shit. It seems enjoyable. I didn't like jump on the train, you know, but maybe I'll watch it one day. And this event is hosted by Teddy Mellencamp and everyone's just like, oh my God, there she is. And it is so clear that she was coached by Tamara on what to do. Cause when she shades Vicky at first, we see Tamara kind of try to act like, you know, she didn't know what's going on, but the look on her face says otherwise. And later on, Teddy pushes Tamara into the pool. It looks like Tamara knew that was gonna happen. In fact, it looks like she was like running towards the pool a little bit. Mind you, like she would have her like mic pack on and be this whole issue, but she did it at the time. So like, it was planned, whatever. Tamara and Vicky were also the only two who correctly guessed who the traitor was. So it's like, girl, make it less obvious. And they kick off by like filling out these forms and whatever, it's kind of like, who's the biggest liar, who drinks the most, blah, 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 like all these different questions and they like, you know, put names and all that shit. We then get side conversation galore during the cocktail hour and it begins with Heather pulling Katie aside. And after inviting her to an upcoming event, she basically asks to start the clean slate, to bury the hatchet, all that shit. And Katie proceeds to begin apologizing for, you know, being nosy and digging around with like her paparazzo friend, all that shit. But Heather basically shuts her down as like, I don't want to re relitigate it. I don't want to go back into it. Like, let's just start fresh. We don't know each other. Let's just begin to know each other basically. And that found to be kind of suspicious. It's like, Heather is like, don't even mention it. Don't bring it up. Like, let's move on. But it's like, Okay, girl, there's also a lot of information about Katie coming out in the blogs recently, so it's kind of like, is Heather Dubrow behind? This is also speculation coming out. But anyways, Katie seems kind of annoyed with Heather, and Heather seems kind of like disingenuous with Katie, but they kind of agree to move on at that moment. We then see Emily and Jen step aside. Emily apologizes and admits that she was out of line, and again, Jen, she doesn't just accept this apology, she kind of like holds her a bit more accountable because she asks if Emily sees herself as being above Jen because, you know, Jen doesn't have any money right now. She's like, do you just value like bank accounts over personality? And Emily's like, no, that's not the case. Like I grew up with nothing. Like I would never think that way. But again, I love that Jen is like, no girl, like what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> you know what I mean? I love that. And Emily then explains that she and Jen had like totally different situations growing up. Jen has been taking care of her entire life and Emily has never been taken care of by anyone. So she's always been like, had to do her own thing, fight her own battles. And that's why she felt the way she did about Jen. And you can argue, you know, it could be partial jealousy and I get that. Like sitting there knowing that you've gone through X, Y, and Z and seeing Jen like, never having had to go through any of that, it can be like frustrating, I get it. But like, look at where she's at now. Jen noted that, you know, she would text her ex-husband to like transfer money. Like, hey, I have to go buy groceries. And he would transfer money. Oh, I have to make car payment, like, like he would take care of everything. And so they can't talk about that and they hug it out and agree to move on. And I really love that A, I'm into accountability and B, Jen, made sure she took full accountability. She didn't just let her off the hook that easily. Finally, we see Tamara, Vicky, and Shannon, and they talk about the Tres Amigas bullshit and all the drinking and John Jansen stuff, all that bullshit. And again, it begins with like talking about them and their friendship group, then it segues to like, 
what Shannon's going through. And regarding the $75,000 lawsuit, Tamara says that Alexis and John ultimately want Shannon to just clear his name. But Shannon says that she's not gonna lie. She's not gonna do that. She refuses, so that's out of the question. They then refocus on the Trace Amiga situation, and Vicky straight up says, we would like for you to come back on the show. No one can replace you, no one can replace Shannon, no one can replace me, like, we are the Trace Amigas. And Tamara kind of weasels her way out of giving an answer by, like, giving a hug and making peace and whatever. But in the confessional, she's like, there's no way in hell that I'm doing that. And in real time, Tamara and Vicky are going at it online, you know, same old, same old shit. The ladies then play a game based on the questions they answered earlier. And we learn that Shannon won most defensive and drinks the most, while Tamara won first throw someone under the bus and biggest traitor. And Tamara is then the first one who was killed by the traitor. The traitor notes that she actually wanted to kill Vicky, not Tamara. As the game continues, Shannon and Vicky are then murdered. And there's this whole moment where they're like, oh my gosh, the Trace Amigas are dead! And they're a little in memoriam type bullshit. Uh, segwaying to the next game, it's like a little boat racing bullshit. Teddy pushes Tamara into the pool. Again, this was very planned, but all the ladies are like, oh my gosh, that is not okay. Cause it was like cold outside. Tamara, when she got out of the pool, she was like wrapped in a blanket, looking like her fucking E.T. shivering and shit. So yeah, this whole fucking moment. And we learned that Heather was a traitor all along. Woo, oh my God. And she was actually a good ass liar. That's the thing. Heather is a really good liar. And that's why, you know, you gotta always side eye her on these shows. But yeah, so for this episode, again, it was very lighthearted, kind of like whatever, but you know, we're right about the midway point of the season, it seems, and let's keep it going. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, stay tuned for more. Thanks again. Bye.